Hi, I'm Jim Carson from Bad Dog Modification and Detailing Center, and it's two, or Saturday, December the 6th, our open house, and I'm here with a really good buddy and probably the biggest gearhead I've ever met, and that would be Martin Barkey from MBRP Exhaust. Martin's the CEO of MBRP Exhaust. He's recently founded Off Camber Fabrications for his Jeep line. He has a retail store that's a fantastic store in Huntsville, the garage. What else am I admitting? You're racing a Porsche in the Continental. Like, what do you do? You don't work. You oh, just, come on now. I work. I just have fun. You just have fun. I you have, have fun. Well. You do have a lot of fun. You build fantastic products. I've been a big supporter of uh, MBRP Exhaust because it's high quality stuff. You have, and we appreciate it. And uh, our store has been founded on uh, Crap Better Best. And we, uh, we like to sell better and best. And MBRP is, we consider the best for diesel, uh, muscle car, and uh, modern muscle and F-150s and Chevys and Dodges and great products. So yeah. you got a long history, Martin. I, I know uh, snowmobile exhaust is really kind of how you started. Yeah, by all means. Yeah, it started in snowmobiles, a uh, one-car garage. Um, literally, you know what? Uh, I took a bad habit uh, going fast and, and maybe being a little louder than I should be, and I turned it into a business and a corporation. So uh, to start off, thanks for having me here today. I really appreciate it. This is uh, a great store and a great event. Looks like you've got a lot of uh, customers here lined up uh, doing business as well. So, uh, and the support that you mentioned, you know what? How long have you and I been doing business now? I don't know. It's got to be like 20 years. Uh, it feels that long. Hey, anyway. that, make, that makes it seem old, though, doesn't it? It does, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we actually met uh, going to a Country Music Awards was maybe one of the first times. Yeah, don't tell anyone on this the Country Music. Yeah, okay, well, the, the, the gig's up because we know Ginger really knows her music she, well. She does, she does. Uh, nothing wrong with a good farm girl. Nothing wrong at all. Listen, I wanted to ask you, there's some questions that I, I think that the general public would have about exhaust systems, but how does MBRP, if you make a claim of a horsepower gain, is it bullshit or like how does it... How do you get there to making that claim? What kind of testing do you do? And yeah, by all means. Um, you know what? We really, if we make a horsepower claim, I can almost guarantee you it's likely one or two less than we actually found on the dyno. So we'll start with uh, flow bench testing. Uh, we'll eventually work our way um, into on onto the dyno. Uh, I was on the dyno personally last night, actually, with our new race car kind of thing. So you know what? There isn't a system that goes out whether it's an ATV, snowmobile. Uh, car, truck, Jeep, everything is dyno tested and literally proven. So when you see, uh, as a dealer, you'll get an MBRP um, NPR, new product release. And if it says that we make, you know, 12 horsepower and, uh, you know, 10 foot-pounds of torque, I could pretty well likely show you that we likely have 13 or 14 horsepower and appropriate torque as well. So everything is dyno tested. When you read, if we put it out there and you read that there's a X amount of gains, 100%. Founded and guaranteed. All right. So some some system, competitive systems, and I'm not going to name names, but if you're just taking like a universal muffler and putting it into a system that logically should provide it, but you know you can't guarantee that, can you? You know, a muffler is a big part of the system and the component, but there's so much more to it. Uh, uh, bend angles, bend uh, degrees, uh, diameter of tubing type of deal. How we route it, how many joints are in there. Um, is the cat still in place? Isn't it in place? Is it an off-road application? So generally speaking, there's aftermarket companies that do just mufflers, but for MBRP, as you know, uh, we're really a complete system. So usually we compose a, a cat back. So keeping all the uh, emissions control devices in place and building a cat back. So if you take your, you know, t let's take an F-150, uh, you know, the last gen kind of thing, we're going to be looking at roughly in and around that 10 to 12 horsepower throttle response, uh, direct fit, finish, longevity, and a nice note that any one of your customers are going to want. They want to see and be seen, they want to be heard, want to look good. But you know what? It's going to provide um, the horsepower that we claim and uh, likely even uh, potentially some uh, fuel efficiency as well. well. You're talking about the noise and say, and you know what customers want. It's, it's a little bit off topic, but I, I just found out the other day that auto manufacturers digitally manufacture the engine sound through the audio system into the cab to make you feel like you've got something that's more than you got. I thought, come on, man. really? Well, I mean, let's look at your customers. Let's, let's pull your customers here. They want a real exhaust that sounds like a real exhaust, or they want it coming through the HVAC system of their car. You know, always are doing it. That's fine. Obviously, they think it must, must do something for them in the sales. But the true performance enthusiasts here in this store are going to want a real system that provides real gains. Well, let, let's talk about a real system and... and what you make in terms of, uh, let's say, a cat back. 
if you're getting a cat back and it's a dual system versus a single system, is, there's no horsepower difference in that? It's the same horsepower, is it? Generally speaking, the car is capable of make car truck is capable of making X amount of horsepower by increasing the rate of flow of the exhaust system. You know, really, the uh, it's really the customer's preference for duals or singles kind of deal. You know, we'll up the size of the um, muffler or the size of the exhaust tubing on a single over say a dual. So okay. generally speaking, we'll take a pickup truck in the parking lot. If it's going to be a single, it's likely going to be a three, maybe even a three and a half inch single. If we're going to do a dual, we'll come into that single inlet muffler off the single cat, obviously to keep it legal, uh, in that same three or three and a half inch, and then we'll dual out or we'll uh, we'll dual tailpipes in the two and a half. Sometimes we'll dual three, but generally speaking, dual two and a half. In the end, the truck doesn't know whether it's a single or a dual. All it's doing is measuring and, and monitoring the rate of flow of that exhaust system. So you're 100% right. Generally speaking, same horsepower gains. It's customer, um, customer preference for single or dual look. Uh, turbocharged engines, you know I'm a Ford guy. Let's not hide that. Uh, and maybe I like you because you make some great systems for Ford cars. The Fiesta ST, uh, the Focus ST, uh, these hot hatches that are coming out with turbocharged mm -hmm. engines. What do you have to think about when you're considering horsepower, even in a dirt diesel turbo? Is there, is there a lot of differences that you have to account for and engineer into a system when you're dealing with a turbocharged engine versus normally aspirated? Well, let's not, in that, that cool list of vehicles, let's not forget the new EcoBoost uh, F-150 sure. as yeah. well. Um, you know, the funny part there, turbos just want to breathe. You know, they can bring the air in, but they got to get rid of the air. So that's, that's really, generally speaking, I mean, there's, a, there's, there's engineering that goes into this. There's CAD drawings, and, you know, I could show you, um, you know, our design department that literally, you know, there's a lot of technology going in, but long and short of it is, let's get a turbo to breathe. Take the new EcoBoost pickup truck, for instance. When it first came out, generally speaking, we go, ah, let's build a cat back. And I think we were again in around the 10 horse, don't quote me, you know, I don't have my, my notes in front of me, but let's say it's 10 horse. It was the Y pipe that made all the, all the power. So the Y pipe was, uh, I believe the Y pipe and cat back com combination was almost 30 horse at the wheels on one of your Ford wow. F-150s. So long and short of it is, turbos want to breathe. Let's get the hot uh, uh, spent exhaust gases out from under that truck or that car. I know when, when I'm asked, uh, where do I spend my best money if I want to increase performance? Uh, my suggestion is start with the exhaust system, a cold air intake, and you know, you're, it's, from there, it's just gonna go up in terms of dollars per horsepower. Is that, is that fair? Yeah, I mean, uh, as I'm in the exhaust industry, I, ha I have to agree with you 100%, exhaust first. All right. But you know what, let's, you know what, we look at uh, the biggest gains really, um, cold air in, hot air out, and a tune. So you mentioned diesels a moment ago. The diesel industry up to 2008 has uh, you know, been just wide open to do basically whatever you'd like to do. And you can get some big tunes now that keep a great fuel economy, uh, longevity, dependability. But again, if you're gonna start making tunes with anyone, a diesel or a pickup truck, then you really have to get rid of that, um, the extra EGTs or exhaust gas temperatures that you're producing. And that's where an exhaust system really rates right up there, get rid of it that way. So yeah, technology today is, is unbelievable. The power that we can make out of say an F-150 or, or even a, a late model a turbo car as well through you know, tunes, colder intake, and as you mentioned, exhaust. Well, you, you brought up uh, diesel and tuning and, and in Ontario, in our area, I'm, we're certainly seeing it, the, the, the crackdown on, on emissions and, uh, and making modifications to the systems that, that or to the vehicles that, that no longer meet federal emission standards, I guess you'd call it. Exhaust systems don't, uh, on themselves, uh, don't, don't affect that at all, do they? Well, you know what, the diesel exhaust industry right now, I, I've been involved in diesel exhaust for many, many years now, and um, it's seeing its biggest changes right here and now. As you mentioned, enforcement of um, catalytic converters and DPF, diesel particulate filter, um, people have been, lately, up to lately, people have been removing them. In 2008, uh, many of the OEs um, followed a Clean Air Act whereby, I believe it was by 2010, they had to be you know, at a certain level and that introduced the uh, diesel particulate filters. Uh, you know, I, I really can't speak uh, you know, what they have done or what they're maybe not doing or what they're supposed to do too much, but long and short of it is you took a good diesel truck that seemingly had great power, um, no issues in regarding uh, emission control devices, it had a cat on it. Cats have been proven since, what, late 60s, early 70s, you know what I mean? They're simple, they work. The introduction of the diesel particulate filter is very complicated. Uh, it's very new technology, 
And, uh, you know, Jim, you've seen it as well. There's been a lot of struggle at the OE level, at the dealer level, and, and even at the, at the consumer or the enthusiast level, why do I need or want this? And uh, for us here at MBRP, we, we do not delete the DPF, and we're building what we call DPF back systems. Uh, we talked about aesthetics, people wanting duals or wanting singles. Uh, unfortunately, now with the DPFs on, uh, although we manufacture these systems and they sell quite well for us, they just don't net the same performance gains they did back in the day when we could go right from the turbo all the way to the tailpipe. Um, turbo to tailpipe on a diesel particular or a diesel truck could net anywhere up to about 24 horse, uh, going from a restrictive, say, three-inch stock system to a nice, uh, smooth-flowing, high-flow uh, mandrel bed four-inch system. Today, it's hard to get that same flow out of that turbo back because we, we can't go further forward than the, uh, send the DPF. Now we've also, we're sitting, uh, we're actually testing with CARB right now in California uh, to get a, a, an EO number to allow MBRP to produce um, downpipes. So what we'll have is a high flow downpipe keeping the DPF in place and of course then going out to a, say a dual four inch, uh, our cool duels that MBRP is known for or a four or five inch single as well. So you know what, it's taking a lot of time, it's taking a lot of investment and, and a lot of uh, development uh, and ingenuity, I guess, but it's, it's, we're, we're today with the DPFs where muscle cars were back in the 70s when the cat, catalytic converters came out. Good comparison. You know what, if you, can't, if, you can't, uh, if you can't beat them, join them, and I think that's really what a lot of the smart manufacturers are doing, and, and yourself as well. Don't delete the DPFs anymore. Join it, embrace it, figure out how we can make power, smart power for the consumer in other ways, and, and we're doing that at MBRP. And responsible for the environment. You, you bet, I mean, you know, yeah, for sure. Tree hugger, no, but I, don't, I also don't want to be that guy rolling coal down Main Street because, you know, I ripped off the DPF anymore. It, yep. it, you know, it, it had its day. Um, you know, the muscle cars, the diesel trucks, you know, that's had its day. You can build clean power now, and technology is growing at a rate just unbelievable rate in the tunes and, and writing code for that. So there's other ways to make your diesel truck more powerful uh, and maintaining the emission control devices. Well, you, you mentioned the aesthetics of a, a cool dual system, which is my favorite. The new black system, like what a great product. Uh, and Thank that the, the, the customer is really responding to that. And, and, and the value of the product is there. Uh, pricing the exhaust system, that brings up the discussion of 409 versus 304 stainless. Maybe just talk a little bit uh, in layman's term, you know, what is that? What does that mean? And right on. Well, MBRP was one of the very first to, to basically give a good, better, best. Um, you know, everybody may have budgets on their vehicles. Um, somebody may have a budget that will allow them to buy the best. Other people may have a budget or, or maybe a timeline. I only have one more year with my vehicle. Why buy the best if I can get away with you know, a product, a good product, you know what I mean? Um, so we basically go, our good, better, best is good is aluminized, uh, better is 409 stainless steel, and our best, of course, is a 304 stainless steel. Um, you know, the warranties are, are accordingly, uh, but the performance is always the same. So based on your scenario or, or you know, your situation with your vehicle, how long you need it to last or how long you're keeping the vehicle, we provide options. Um, aluminized is just that. It's what we all know to be you know, cost effective. It's, it's aluminized. It's mild steel coated with an aluminized coating. Um, and it, it will get you through many, many years depending on um, your situation. I mean, Where are you I, using it? Yeah, you bet. I mean, we're fortunate we ship all around the world really, but even if we just take North America, I've got customers in Florida, California, Texas. And, and I wish they'd buy a 304, but really, they're buying aluminized because they can get in on a, on a bottom basement dollar value and it's gonna last them forever. Um, now, I still have same customers that want that glitz and glamor, that shine, that beautiful polished tailpipes, or, or perhaps the black that you mentioned. So, you know what, there's options. But stepping up to 409, what we call um, our, our better, uh, it's a stainless steel. The misconception, though, amongst likely your customers and mine, is that if I buy stainless steel, it will never deteriorate, and that's not true. It really does. 409 stainless, I don't care which brand uh, of exhaust you look at, many of us actually buy our 409 from the same supplier. We've all sourced out what we deem to be the best supplier in our automotive industry. So 409 isn't dictated by what I want 409 to be, it's dictated by world markets. 
409 has this much chromium, this much nickel, this much steel in it. It's 409 no matter who you buy it from. And um, you know what, if you've been in the industry- There's a standard of what makes up 409. You bet. Okay. And, it, and I'm not setting that standard, nor sure. does the uh, CEOs or principals of any other exhaust manufacturer. It really is set by a world standard. Um, so 409 has enough nickel or chromium content that it can withstand, say, the salts that we have or the new uh, liquid uh, de-icers that we see on the, on the roads now. Um, but that stuff is tough on it. I mean, I'm looking out your window right now. We have snow up there. You have salt in your parking lot. Uh, 409 can tend in the, in the harshest climates to pick up a surface rust. Um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of metals on the road that actually will adhere to your exhaust system as well. It's funny, we've seen guys will say, I have rust on my exhaust system. I can chip it right off. It has actually a foreign substance on your exhaust. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen that. Yeah, here. like the, the brake pads are all made of metallic, and they've got metal particles in them. Tires, and, and, yeah, you tires, I mean? yeah. You know what I mean? So the heat will, you know, you can have a metal stick to your exhaust. It will rust. But back to the 409. Um, the 409 can potentially deteriorate in the harshest climates. Now we still put a lifetime warranty, so any one of your customers that have our 409 still has a warranty and good to go as long as they own the vehicle and away they go. And, and you know what, you and I take care of them regardless. But uh, stepping up to the best, it is just that. It's 304, it's mirror polished, it's gorgeous, and it's gonna look gorgeous forever. Uh, but like any good stainless steel, it can turn a golden color, especially as we get back into, if we talk diesels, where we're putting big heavy tunes in it where the heat is a lot, um, a lot more intense. So really, the stainless steel is gonna be there forever. The neat part about buying what I've deemed the best, uh, I've seen it over the years where customers will buy a 304 MBRP, they'll use it on one of your diesel F250s or F350s, and what can they do with that system two years after they deal in for a new one? They can sell that system for 40, 50 cents in the dollar, they can unbolt it from their truck and literally resell it if they wanted to, because it really is a system yeah. that'll be around forever. Sure. So, Hope that well, answers your question. Yeah, it, what, what I tell customers is that, uh, yeah, uh, okay, if you want the best, 304, here you go, MBRP, write the check. But um, if there is any budget concerns that come up, I, I talk, I try to say, I try to describe it this way, and I guess I'm asking if I'm right. If you have a, if you have a lifted truck and your exhaust system is exposed, the 409 is not gonna rust through and corrode, but it's gonna show rust on the outside. The 304 is still going to show maybe a little on there, but it'll clean off so easy. Yeah. And what I like about what you offer is, if budget is a concern, you can always run a 409 system and buy one of your tips, 304. Are all your tips 304? Yeah, so all of our tips are 304. They will not rust. They can't rust. Um, or we have, as you already mentioned, the black series, but we also have black tips. And right now, um, you know what, the black stuff is just, it's hot. It's, it's the hottest item out there. Whether you have a, a gas truck or a, a Jeep or, or a diesel, black's where it's at. Or a Mustang. People, or a Mustang. Black is literally where it's at and people are, uh, people are flocking. So not only do we have black tips that you can finish, um, finish the car off. A lot of guys are, you know, as you know, blacking their cars and trucks out and the black tips just are killer. But we also have black exhaust systems as well for our muscle cars, our Jeeps, and, and some of the hottest trucks as well. So. Um, you know what, there's, there's even more, more styles to choose from over the good, better, best. We have good, better, best, and I guess black we could add to the, to the mix as well. Well, I want to finish uh, talking about your, your racing career and a relatively new career, and I have a few things. But before we get that, you mentioned Jeep. Today you brought your 2014 JK SEMA project vehicle. Mm -hmm. Awesome looking Jeep, I gotta well, say. Thank you very much. And you're using that as a platform really to show what you're capable of with a new company that is uh, off camber, uh, fabrications, mm -hmm. um, all Jeep products at this point in time, but roof racks, bumpers, side steps. You got a new uh, light bar mount that looks killer. Well, thanks. Um, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna probably looking at that right now as it's it's edited in, but we're gonna certainly get lots of film of that before you leave. So, the the Jeep uh, line. I mean, it was the uh, SEMA top SUV again for accessorized vehicle. I think the stats are that more money is spent on the aftermarket on Jeeps than any other truck, right? Doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me if that is true. I mean, just take a look at that one. The amount of accessories on there, and some people can go way beyond that kind of a deal. But I, I appreciate you bringing off Off Camber. Off Camber Fabrications uh, is just a spin off of me having too much time on my hands. Um, you know what? I, I'm a big fan. Uh, the business side of me 
Diversification is key. I can hear the commercial now. Too much time on my hands. Yeah, there we go. Whatever that song was. Uh, by all means. Uh, you know what? I'll sit around. I'll be chatting with my staff, my managers. Uh, you know, I could be, as you mentioned, you know, at a racetrack talking to guys and ideas just pop up. And, and you know what? I'm an idea guy. I like, uh, you know, pushing forward. I like, you know, I like doing business with people. So the Jeep just really spun off. Spun off of uh, We started building exhaust for, for Jeeps. And then... Um, you know, we start talking to uh, enthusiasts and, and Off Camber spun off of that. So, as you mentioned, uh, just a lot of accessories from Off Camber. Well, just the ideas you come up with, like those, maybe, I don't know, maybe somebody else had the, I don't know where it came from, but I saw those brackets in the hood to mount that LED bar, thin LED bar below the windshield, below your line of sight. Incredible. That's a great product. It, it's unique. I mean, right now, I mean, if we walk out to your parking lot, you've got to have you know, rigid, rigid seems that they just, rigid lighting has just knocked it out. I don't, I don't know what brand you carry kind of thing. Yeah, we there's should. all kinds yeah, of great no, we brands. we carry rigid, Anzo, and lots of great brands. There you yeah. go. And uh, you know what? Lighting is just cool. I don't care if you have a Mustang, as you mentioned, or if you've got a, a pickup truck, gas or diesel. Lighting seems to be a great aftermarket. I'm sure your store is completely stocked up and ready to go. My so, store is completely LED lighting, as there, a matter of fact. There you go. So not only in automotive, you're here in, uh, in, the, um, in the unit as well. But you know what, we just wanted to cater, if lighting is a big need, why not build some brackets to go with it? I mean, I'm not afraid to jump on the bandwagon. If there's something out there that's hot and I can, I can have a little piece of that pie, let's do it. And really, we're, we're so fortunate. We have thousands of dealers uh, across North, North America. So for us to bring out a, a, you know, a half a dozen new part numbers off, uh, under, say, on off-camber fabrication, it just, we're very blessed that it takes off and it, and it, and it supplies uh, a need for um, some of the dealers out there. Well, if, uh, if anybody's watching this and they get a chance to go to your store, the garage on Highway 11, I mean, it's a super cool place. Thank you. Uh, it's a competitor, but it's a super <laughs> cool place. And in the parking lot, you might see a C7 Corvette with one of your systems on there. You might see a Camaro ZL1. You might see a Duramax, a Cummins. You've always got something around there, Jeeps. The Ford products, uh, I got to tell you, are some of my favorites. What was that? The favorite one I remember was in 05, 06, you built a Super Duty and a matching V-Rod. And that was that all done, that skull and the flames. And that yeah. was, those brake calipers were custom made. Like One-offs. Where do you get all these ideas from? Do you have a whole staff? Or is this new that directs it and says, can we do this or what? Well, it's both actually. You know what, again, I, I think I lay awake at night or you know, and, and th dream up things. And some of them are, are conceivable. Other ones are just out in left field. but. Uh, you know what, I, I just, I have a lot of fun in the automotive world, and you know what, I have a lot of great staff too. I'm, I'm blessed with a lot of great managers, uh, a wife that enjoys um, the automotive field and, and the vehicles and the projects that we build. But you know what, it's, I have the easy job. I come up with the ideas, and then I can go to my designers or various managers and say, hey, can you build that? Can we build that? And uh, you know, a lot of times they'll tweak it up even better than what I originally thought of. But uh, yeah, that's, that's how it starts out. And you know what, just talking to guys like you and I might be doing here now. You come up with an idea and might run back and throw it through a CAD program and see what the guys think and before long, you know, it might take six months to a year and there uh, it is. Do you remember I called you with that cockamamie idea I had for the thing that would go in the trailer hitch and a two beer thing with a cargo net for smaller, you remember that? I do. Yeah, so that wasn't such that a great idea. Through. No, that one didn't come <laughs> through. So having fun on the racetrack, uh, man. I got into you. First of all, the Viper that you had, uh, that was, what series was that? Was that Grand Am or? Um, that was in a, a regional event called CASC out of, okay. uh, of Mosport. Um, so that was my first year of, of racing in a, um, in a non-professional level. Uh, just, I was driving too fast on the street. Like, uh, I, I drive too fast, period. And since I've taken up racing. You're talking I, about I, the Autobahn in Germany when you mean the street, the place that, where it's legal. Of course, legal. not yeah. locals, yeah. Yeah. not I, local I got highways you. at all. It's probably going to lead into the Porsche store um, next. Go ahead. There we go. Um, so you know what, I, that was my first year racing locally. I, I had a Viper ACRX. Uh, you know the neat part there was I had my staff made up the whole race team. So we would go to work Monday through Friday. We'd load up Friday afternoon and all the people I was working with would, would show up in the track and go. And that was pretty cool, uh, working with uh, your own staff, um, building relationships and, and just building on relationships at the racetrack as well. Uh, but it has grown to a considerably uh, much larger endeavor uh, over the last three years, actually. You're not actually getting paid to do this now, are you? Uh, gee, Jim, I wish I was. Let's just say I'm having a lot of fun to do All right. it. You know what I mean? Um, actually, last year I raced in a, in a pro series, uh, what was Grand Am, 
is now called Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge. I raced with a team out of Florida in a Porsche, but I'm happy to say this year I'm in, uh, in a North American car. I did try to get in a new Mustang. The new Mustangs won't hit the track till the middle of the year, um, but I am in a, a brand new uh, Z28R Camaro uh, racing with uh, Mantello Autosports, uh, a, a Toronto-based. Uh, actually, I know them. Oh, do you? Yeah. Oh, right uh, indirectly, they've uh, been clients over the years. Oh, very cool. Great and, group of guys, great uh, engineers. Another people I know that you've been involved in is FAF. Uh, yes. FAF Auto Works. Yep. They have an amazing uh, paint shop that does aluminum repair, and the new F-150 yep. is going to be aluminum, so oh, we have a relationship cool. there, too. There's, yep. We know all the same people just about. Oh, right on. So we're going to wrap it up, and I want to first off say thank you for coming. Uh, we're going to check out that Jeep JK, and we had a great turnout today. We're going to give away a $500 coupon towards any MBRP product they make. Right we're going on. to do that draw. We're going to give away some tickets. We've got some uh, hats and T-shirts you brought. And uh, once again, Market Martin, pleasure. And uh, Thank you. Good to have you. Thanks for coming down to Orangeville. Right on. That's Jim Thanks Carson and Martin Barkey with uh, Bad Dog Modification Detail Center, 670 Rydell Road, baddogmods.com. Martin's at mbrp.com. You can find all the stuff from there, the garage.net. Yeah, it's, I don't know what off, yeah, off. You got a website for off camera? We do. Uh, OCF.com. OCF.com. So check it out. Lots of new products coming. We're going to show you some that nobody else has even seen in the public today. So thanks very much. Thanks again. Thanks, Jim.